Hello everyone, in this video we propose Tarvis, which is a unified architecture for tackling target-based video segmentation tasks. Currently, SODA methods for tasks such as video object segmentation, video instance segmentation, and video panoptic segmentation employ task-specific architectures. Tarvis, on the other hand, is able to tackle all these tasks with a unified network. To do this, we employ a novel transformer-based architecture which encodes the task as a set of queries. The architecture mainly contains a video feature extractor and a transformer decoder. We design the network to be task agnostic so it can be applied to multiple tasks by simply hot swapping the set of input queries at runtime. To verify our approach, we train a single model jointly on a collection of seven different datasets covering four different video segmentation tasks. Tarvis achieves state-of-the-art results on four of these and performs competitively on the remaining three. In order to build such a multitask architecture, we first conceptually unify the task definitions. We note that video segmentation tasks generally require segmenting a set of targets from the input video. For example, the segmentation targets for the VIS task are all objects belonging to the set of predefined categories. For video panoptic segmentation, the targets additionally include non-instantiable semantic classes such as sky, grass, etc. If we look at the popular video object segmentation task, the targets are defined as a specific set of objects for which the first frame masks are given. And finally, the recently introduced point exemplar guided tracking task is simply a more constrained version of VOS where we're only given a single point inside the object in the first frame. By formulating the tasks in this way, we can design an architecture where the model itself is task agnostic and the task-specific targets are encoded as a set of dynamic input queries. It's worth noting that our architecture can theoretically tackle any video segmentation task as long as we can come up with a way of encoding the segmentation targets as queries. Now let's take a look at the architecture and how it actually tackles all these tasks. We start off with a sequence of video frames which go through a backbone network followed by a so-called temporal neck, which we will discuss shortly. For now, it suffices to know that it outputs a set of multi-scale video features. Then, for instance segmentation, we initialize a set of instance queries to capture any number of objects in the video. Additionally, we also have a set of semantic queries and a background query. These three query sets are concatenated and input to our transformer decoder, which refines these queries by applying self-attention among the query set and also cross-attention with the multi-scale video features. The output of the decoder is a set of refined queries. To segment the instances, we simply compute the dot product between the instance queries and the highest resolution video feature map. To assign category labels to the instances, we compute classification scores by taking the dot product of the instance queries with the semantic and background queries. For panoptic segmentation, the workflow is very similar. The only difference is that in addition to instance masks, we also compute semantic segmentation output by taking the dot product between the semantic queries and the video features. For video object segmentation, we know beforehand which objects need to be tracked based on their first frame masks. To encode these targets as queries, we use an object encoder which is based on our earlier work. In a nutshell, it works by averaging the image features inside each object mask, followed by iterative self-attention and mask cross-attention to refine the representation. In a similar fashion, we also initialize multiple queries to represent all background points which are not part of any object. The resulting set of object and background queries are then refined by the transformer decoder. And at the end, we compute object masks by simply taking the dot product between the video features and the object queries. Lastly, for point exemplar guided tracking, we follow a very similar workflow. The only difference is that we sample the image feature with the given point rather than averaging over the features covered by the mask. So overall, Tarvis is flexible with respect to the type of guidance given for the object, whether it be a mask, a point, or potentially even a bounding box. Now let's take a look at our novel temporal neck design. The motivation behind this is that we predict masks by computing the dot product between queries and video features. This can only work well if the video features are consistent over time for the target entities. However, the backbone alone cannot achieve this because we use standard ResNet and SWIN networks which extract per image features. So the idea behind the temporal neck is to incorporate temporal context and learn consistent video features over time. Our implementation for this is based on the deformable attention encoder which is quite popular in image level methods. It works by iteratively refining the multi-scale features from the backbone over multiple layers. Each layer is composed of two parts. 
The first is a deformable attention operation within each image frame. The second part is our proposed temporal component. We divide the spatiotemporal feature volume into a grid along the spatial dimensions and then apply self-attention separately within each grid cell. So in the example shown, all the pixel features highlighted in red attend to each other. Likewise, there are three other grid cells within which we apply self-attention. Now let's discuss the benchmark results. For YouTube Viz, Darvis outperforms the second best method by a healthy margin of 2.7% in terms of AP. For OVIS dataset, we are also SOTA but with a comparatively smaller margin. Moving on to video object segmentation, here we see that Tarvis performs competitively, but compared to the SOTA method, it lags behind by 0.9% JNF. The reason behind this is that our approach to VOS involves summarizing each object as a concise object query, and this process results in a loss of fine-grained object information about the target. By comparison, SOTA VOS methods lack multitask capability, but they retain fine-grained object detail much better. Moving on to point exemplar guided tracking, we see that Tarvis performs significantly better compared to the dataset's baselines. The performance gained for both validation and test sets is over 10% for the final HOTA metric. For video panoptic segmentation, we see that Tarvis performs very well on Kitty Step, but on Cityscape's VPS, the current SOTA method outperforms us by 4.2%. But it's worth noting that VIP Deep Lab requires depth maps for training, whereas we do not. Lastly, on the recently introduced VIPSEC dataset for panoptic segmentation, we see that Tarvis per performs over 25% better compared to the dataset baseline. Finally, here are some qualitative results for different tasks and datasets. In conclusion, we presented a unified architecture for video segmentation which encodes tasks as dynamic input queries to the network. We evaluated our approach on seven different benchmarks spanning four different tasks. The pre-trained models and source code for our work are available on GitHub. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.